to think that we are now already about halfway through this fucking hell ride. <laughs> it, like, as I said, it feels like we should be in the final stretch. Also, that statement uh, had you wondering if I meant the game or current events? Answer, yes. All of the above. Yeah, we're back doing this shit again. This fucking, like, knockoff, like, like, horizontal shoot 'em up. It's... I don't even like the I don't even like the horizontal ones compared to the vertical ones normally. So it's like this extra does nothing for me. <laughs> ah, see, I, I I prefer the horizontal ones myself. Um, R Type Delta is one of my favorite uh, shooters of all time, and R Type oh, yeah. Final. But I think part of my bias is because of the shoot 'em ups that Treasure ever did. Both of them were vertical scrolling. Nah, fair. Um, I was never as much of a fan of the bullet hell kind of thing. Yeah. But even then, I think in my mind, it, I, I guess it always made more sense, like, in the concept of how, you know, especially, like, in the classic sense, like, playing a shoot 'em up it was always, like, controlling a spaceship, and I guess, like, it made more sense in my, in my mind that up was actually moving up or forward as opposed to, you know, vertically ascending, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it just depends on how your brain works. Yeah. And of course, that's not to say there aren't any good horizontal shooters. I mean, I mean, how I played like you know a good number of the Gradius games, Gradius Five especially. That's really fucking good. Yep, which is another treasure game. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and yeah, and I... also a and also a Konami game on multiple levels because Treasure was founded by ex Konami devs. Yep. Spent so much time on Gradius V back in the day, still never managed to, fe to finish it. Yeah. Although I, I did like the uh, time travel aspects to it. Those were completely dumb, but very cool. Yeah, yeah, the twist was done very well. Yeah, you can tell this is the Shadows of the Damned LP because this is another one of those moments where we just talk about games that are similar to whatever part we're in that are way, way fucking better. <laughs> just desperately talking about anything but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, in fairness, like, you've seen the first couple of bits of this. What else is there to say? Oh, look, yeah, it's like... more papercraft. whoop de doo Mm-hmm. Like, it's... Yeah, because it's very much, there's not really any new concepts being introduced outside of different weapon power-ups. Yeah. Like, like, the last version we were in, you know, like, the weapon pickup was the teether, which basically gave you, like, a rapid-fire uh, projectile. And this is basically the, the skull cushioner, so it's just, like, giving you, like, a very powerful big projectile that's slow. Yeah, although doesn't the projectile drop in this uh, version? I don't think so. Because I always I felt I... like it did, like so, like it was more like a cannonball kind of shot. Hmm. Or maybe I was, maybe I'm making that up. Um, I said uh, it's more most recent hmm. playthrough. I stopped playing before I got to this. So I got to the big boner section and was like, "Yep, yeah, not doing this again." Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, there, there's a small difference between uh, suffering for your art and outright self harm. <laughs> yeah. But hey, at least we've got the the teeth are back. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it does a better job of like breaking down this barricade. Yeah, but kind of depressing that our biggest challenge so far has been trees. <laughs> and I guess, and I guess the shadow enemies as well, if only because of how kind of annoying this game's like semi-omnidirectional aiming is because you can't aim behind you. Hmm. It's always in a 180 degree radius. I'm not sure if that's an oversight or exactly what they were intending. I'm pretty sure it's the latter. And I think like a lot of things in this game, a lot of things they intended, they just did not, like, they were not very smart about. Yeah. Still, at least we don't have to put up with any of that shit again, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, we're back to a normal gameplay segment after this. That's good. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Yeah, we... 
We've gone from Act 4, 4 to 4, 5. We're heading to, to the worst nightmare of all, the suburbs. <laughs> Social commentary. <laughs> Be careful around the corner. You might run into the most terrifying enemy of all, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this, yeah, this section... is a very, very RE4-ish looking kind of setup. I was thinking God Hand myself, um, but like once you, look, once you get into was it stage two? Um, kinda. With, just after yeah. you meet the the merchant for the first time, kind of similar to that as well. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, you can kind of also see with God Hand as well, because there is like one of like the late stage like areas where it is you're going through like the different caverns. It's where you fight like Tiger Joe, and then you like yeah. fight like the Paris Hilton succubus for the final time. <laughs> God, Shannon, need to that's bring her God. name. Yes, I, yeah. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Every character in God Hand, except for Gene, and even then, that's a big if. Acts like they are the hottest shit ever when they are just the most clown shoe like. Carnival freak show rejects ever. I just remember the um, the King of the Devils or whatever he, he was um, was voiced by the same guy that did Spotswood and Team America. So we oh. just we just kept Ta taking the piss out of that because the, the pair of them were both spent most of their time sitting in a chair. So we just make oh, jokes yeah. about them drifting off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so like the, I guess like yeah. Belze, right? You're talking about like the guy who yes. like, always had the had the had the purple suits. Yes, that's the one. Here's a good instance of the t of the dentist in action, and it's homing projectiles. That's cool, right? <laughs> for every like three shots that hit, you wasted about seventeen. Yeah, it's kinda. It's ten out of ten for concept. Execution will be taken out and put shot behind the woodshed. <laughs> Yeah. Man, now I just realized, like, after playing some of, like, the recent New Blood demos, I mean, like, specifically for Ultra Kill, like, the alt fire for, like, that game, like, that game has a nail gun, and it basically, oh. like, has, like, a, basically a better version of what the dentist tried to do, where it has the ability to, like, make your, like, rapid fire shots, like, your, your nail gun projectiles actually home in on enemies. Mm. But you have like more control over it in a weird way because you basically tag them before firing. It's yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's it's cool when you can like tag enemies before you start firing. Um, yeah, because that way you're like, right, I know for a fucking fact that my shots are gonna go where I want them to. Yeah, but but is. But Ultra Kill makes it especially cool because you tag them, you fire a whole bunch of nail gun shots, and like, and afterwards, like, you just see them swarming around the enemy like, like a fucking like swarm of hornets or some shit. <laughs> Murder hornets, but for real this time. Yeah. The pain. Nope, nope, none of that. <laughs> hey, look, the dentist is actually being useful for a change. Oh no, wait, never mind. Nah. That that was a wonderful second and a half of the dentist actually being a worthwhile piece of uh, equipment. Yeah. I mean, we're still getting ammo back, like it's not like I'm complaining. Yeah. That the one saving grace for it is that ammo is plentiful. Mhm. Mm but it's still like it just annoys me because it feels like I'm constantly wasting ammo for it. Yeah. Like, no matter what you do, you always feel like... If, if, if they just cut down the number of shots fired but made them more accurate, I would personally feel better about it. Yeah. Then again, I'm one of those weirdos that... Oh no, I've fired two bullets, I'd better reload the whole mag. <laughs> I feel called out. <laughs> like, I would die in real war just because I'd be like, No, no, I'm reloading! Shit, I've only got three mags! Um... 
it's not like Counter Strike at all, is it, Steve? <laughs> it's not different at all, is it, Steve? <laughs> Well, yeah, I sure could go for some uh, combat in the theater of war. But yeah, this is pretty nice. <laughs> I promise I will never do that again. Okay, workshop time. Which Aqua Teen Hunger Force characters line up well with the cast of Shadows of the Damned? Oh. <laughs> uh, Garcia is a cross between... Um, Master Shake and Frylock, obviously. Oh yeah, he's got both. Um, uh, Carl loves the sushi lamp because fuck you. Um, <laughs> actually, no, he's he's more like the the ghost of Cy the cybernetic ghost of Christmas past. Uh, oh, Johnson, from the future. yes. <laughs> <laughs> John but, Johnson, I think he could be like I just think complete like the the original trifecta to Garcia. He could be Meebwad. Yes, yes, because he can transform into like three things. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's very amorphous. <laughs> Except marginally more useful than a hot dog or an eggler. We're practically in Fleming's backyard yeah. now. Are you sure we should press on? Mm. I'm a Mexican, Johnson, not a Mexican. Bravo! Yes, he said the line. Original. Hey. Oh, man. It is nice, though, like, as far as, like, of the details this game does, that as you go through the game, you you do see the Castle of Hassle getting visibly closer. They're armored. You need to find a way to flip things to your advantage. Now, these enemies, like, I actually don't mind, especially because... My, yes, it, it's in this fight, I think, that I, like, show off, like, why the alt fire for the pistol is especially fun. It's because of, like, like hitting them with the glob. And depending on if you get it just right, uh, I, I think, or, may, or maybe I'm misremembering. Uh, For some reason, I seem to think that, like... You tag them with that, and if they were to like run in into like an object, and the and the blob collided with that object at, at the right angle, it would explode on them. Why would demons go out of? But but no, I think it's also because you hit them with that, and if you were to shoot them while they're mid roll, that counts the same, and that opens them up for you to hit their weak point. Yeah, I mean they're basically just bone wheels, but less annoying. Yeah, they're they're more exploitable. I mean, when when they stay down, they stay down for a good. So when they go, when you knock them down, they stay down for a good amount of time. So yeah, that makes them less annoying than most enemies like that. Yeah, but again, like the thing, like like the reasons I described, it kind of goes back to like something I do usually like in games where, you know, there's often like a very heavily encouraged like single method of taking out a particular enemy but i also appreciate it when there's like one or two extra like hidden methods of doing it stuff that mm. you kind of only uh, are able to really figure out just by experimenting not and, quite and, and like the pistol alt fire on them and using that to interrupt their their spinning attack is like an example of that for me yeah not quite an exploit but not quite intended either oh yeah some of the best feelings you can have, like, in a single-player game is, like, those feelings of being, like, you discovered something that was entirely a result of yourself and not something that was, like, pre-planned by the designers. Hmm. It's, it's, it's always nice when a game gives you other options and, you know, it's up to you to work them out, essentially. Oh, yeah. Well, these sections still haven't gotten any less annoying. No. Nope. Yeah, the fact they've made it even more annoying because it's even less clear where the fuck like the light source is. But no, Seriously. it turns out this is this is one of those this is another one of those sections where you have to launch the firecracker, which means it only gives you temporary like safety from the darkness. I think this is probably the most Resident Evil-y area so far in the game as well. With yeah, the, this uh, is definitely 
reminiscent of like some of the larger arenas in the first third of RE4, definitely. At least the game doesn't uh, cause damage while you're busy charging up fireworks or anything. Yep, QTEs leave you perfectly safe. But of course, this has those switches that you have to be in darkness to even shoot, so sometimes you, you still have to wait an unnecessary amount of time. Yeah. It's just, I, 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 we keep doing these and I'm like, I remember being really excited for this game back in the day and yeah. in retrospect, I cannot figure out why. Because, I mean, Same. at least, like, Lollipop Chainsaw was a very short game, but, you know, James Gunn worked on it, you know, there was some hilarious writing in it, um, it had a lot going for it. And yeah, there's some good lines in this, but on the whole, it's like, why did I like this? For, you know, at the very least, a short time. And I mean, like, you obviously mentioning Lollipop Chainsaw again, it's like, this game, Shadows of the Dam, was the reason why I became unexcited for Lollipop Chainsaw. Because <laughs> I saw how this turned out. Yeah, no, I, I think I played them the other way around. Um, so I got Lollipop Chainsaw first. And then right. it's like, oh yeah, this is a game as well, because I've completely forgotten about it for some reason. And, you know, Lollipop Chainsaw, thought it was lots of fun. This... <sighs> can, can you yeah. really call it a substandard RE4 clone when one of the guys behind RE4 worked on it? Like, is that a thing we can do? Yes, considering I think the the likely degree to which like the people that this game tried to advertise as the creative leads actually had so little involvement with. In the yeah, I think when you get down to it, Akira Yamaoka probably had the most involved, most direct involvement. Well, yeah, because it's like who the fuck else is gonna do music? <laughs> yeah. Well, might as well get this guy, you know, well, okay, here, here's a Casio, um, you just sit there until we, you know, tell you what we need. And then, and then Akira's like, no need, draws a sigil, opens a portal to hell, and like, goes in with a recorder. <laughs> I'll be <It's>, back later. <laughs> pulls out the tattered skin of a demon, and he's like, no, it's okay, I've got one, I've got like a whole soundtrack prepared already. <laughs> That, that's how he's able to get those soundtracks uh, as they were like in the old Team Silent games. Just drops it off in a wet puddle and vanishes in a puff of brimstone. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like he didn't record it in the studio. The, the other world in Silent Hill is actually <laughs> real. He just goes there all the time for vacation. <laughs> the music already existed. I was merely a conduit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Speak not that name in my presence. Did takes his music really seriously, is what I'm saying. Yeah. That and the fact that he's able to essentially just, like, shit out a soundtrack in three months. Yeah! Oh, Because um, there's a game coming out for the, the new Xbox. I forget what it is. Um, I think it's the new Bloober Team game. And the music in it, I was... I was watching the trailer and I was like, wow, Akira Yamaoka has got to be suing someone because this sounds so much like his work. And then at the end they're like, oh yeah, and we've got Akira Yamaoka doing the soundtrack, and I was like, well, shit. Well, motherfucker. <laughs> well, that's one reason to be interested in it. I suppose, yeah. It's like, the, the game was just trying so hard to be Silent Hill 2, as all of these games are. It's, stop trying yeah. to make it happen, it's never gonna. Um, and, like, the, the soundtrack being, like, a, almost a one-for-one -one copy, it was like, well, you know, not yeah. surprising. And it turned yes. out it was him, and I was like, that is surprising. <laughs> 
That'd be like if the ukulele reveal like happened and people were like, this music sounds like it's ripping off Grant Kirkhope, only to be like, oh wait, no, he actually was on there. <laughs> Also, or, um, David Weiss, too. Fuck it, we're bringing back all your rare favorites. <laughs> yes, which rare which rare, rare game was your favorite? The one where you had to collect 3,000 items to a jaunty theme? Or the one where you had to collect 3,001 items to a jaunty theme? <laughs> Not saying they were all the same game, but they don't make it difficult to deny. Yeah. Also, this is another deny. fun thing about these enemies. If you get them like lined up just right, colliding with each other does count as knocking them out of their spin attack and leaving them open. Oh, cool! Like this is, yeah. This is this is why they they are like a good contender for like my favorite enemy in this game, which says a lot because I don't think favorite enemy is a concept I ever thought I would say for any enemy in this game. <laughs> <laughs> now, favorite. Dot dot dot, you know. What's your what's your favorite yeah, in yeah. this game? Um Dick joke maybe. Favorite post credit sequence, there we go, because there's a good one. Yeah, that's true. Like we've been hyping that up for so long, people are gonna get to it and be like, what that's it. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I'll make it better for them. <laughs> you assholes lied to me! <laughs> I'm dead serious, though. I've actually, like, edited, like, the like the credits uh, sequence and stuff together, specifically because I have a gimmick for that. Oh, boy. Too bad <clears throat> you're still gonna have to wait, like, five more fucking videos or something for, for us to get there. <laughs> Just skip to the end now, no one will notice, I promise. Yeah, just don't- oh wait, no, but we also still have that fucking book club that we're doing at the end of every video, and we want people to watch those. Shit. Yeah, damn it. Fuck, why- why did we- why did I agree to do this and not just a podcast? Fuck! <laughs> Practically it is, for fuck's sake. I mean- I mean, hell, we still- I mean, the reason for why we started this was Admiral because we played uh, because we went through Travis Strikes again and was like, and we got to uh, revisit Shadows of the Damned again in a pseudo sequel with yeah. areas recreated from this game, like this one right here, actually. <laughs> so you're saying the moral of the story is nostalgia is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I will say, it is good to take a look at the games that he did that weren't just No More Heroes or The Silver Case and that. Yeah. It's just... And even, <laughs> like, in terms of non suda games, like, as far as the games that, that, like, at least I've done LPs of oh, over the course of my time, like, doing this shit for a hobby, like... And like like this game particularly, I guess like it's kind of nice of at a point to actually kind of like show what this game was, even if it's like if this game and the LP I'm doing it are like the equivalent of a shit post compared to <laughs> all the other things I did before. <laughs> That's welcome. But hey, to at least I'm not playing Ninja Gaiden Three. Oh, fuck I'm, I'm no. at least I'm at least staving myself off of that bullshit. <laughs> not, not not unless someone like fucking buys me. Oh yeah, you didn't realize that I had gotten lost and had no idea where to go. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, hey, I, you, I see you gotta, what you mean you by this being a shit post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, a little rep uh, a, a reprise of our old buddy Groose. <laughs> <laughs> like, take it, take it a bit too literally there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you were saying about Ninja Gaiden 3. Oh yeah, like I like I'm still not gonna play that game like unless uh, circumstances happen where someone like buys me like something uh, like ga uh, like game related or something that would be otherwise impossible for me to get with my own money that uh, that I absolutely want and would make abs you know, make the most out of if I were to get it. Dude, there are lunatics slash sadists out there who will do that. Have you not paid attention to the LP forum for the last decade? 
Yeah, like, well, no one's I paid enough attention to me to actually make good <laughs> content, so I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, well, well, where's my fucking payola? <laughs> Damn. Which, fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe that'll change if I ever start a Patreon. <laughs> Beauty. Just guarantee at some point in the next couple of years, someone is going to come on to uh, YouTube and be like, So, I want to see you suffer. Fucking dance, monkey. Uh. Well, maybe you should move out of the way when Miles is in the area. Yeah. There was a knock at the door, and Henry Wallen appeared. Henry again. Jeez Louise. You were magnificent, <laughs> Mr. Vangelo. Did you My see? thoughts exactly. The papers are calling you the finest <laughs> soprano of the 19th century. He looked at the floor and shifted his feet uncomfortably. Every man in town loves you. Stupid Henry, moaned Justine as she examined her profile. I think he's using my Akira Yamaoka voice. I'm not pleased at this. Like me. <laughs> yes, Akira Yamaoka actually was a 19th century, like, English man. I knew it! The Japanese name and identity is just an alias. He just, he was an alchemist the whole time. Yeah. He escaped to hell for centuries and then resurfaced in the land of Japan. <laughs> Needed to get a job though because he couldn't because all his old uh, resources and shit weren't much worth of anything and that's how he landed at Konami. Is that like punishment for his actions or Justine was bent over the waste basket. I don't know, that gagging and heaving. I guess considering what happened to everyone who made those original Silent Games, Silent Hill games ended up at, I guess that was like a long-term punishment. Yeah. Didn't didn't seem like it at the time. Turns out the real other world was the companies we worked at along the way. Yep. Oh, how sweet. No small feet, she shouted in rage. A large feet, is that it? She crumpled up the note. Threw it on the floor and stopped on it for good measure. Something inside of her had snapped. From that Pfft, moment checks. Forward, Am I right? Determined to never sing again. <sighs> go to hell. Just as All body as types are valid. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows exactly what happened to Justine after that. Not the impresario who had begged her to come back. Not the reporters who had begged her to come back. But yeah, as you could Not probably Henry, tell, too to as again. like these storybooks like Chrissy to Boss wrong. Fight, this is Henry obviously the story crushed. of Henry Justine, like the, like, like the weird goth opera singing lady Henry that we've been Justine's seeing life. all over hell. Yeah, she doesn't have much of an impact, but she accidentally winds up being the the foremost bad guy in this simply for the, for the simple fact that she shows up so often, despite the fact she does yeah. nothing. Even though, like, in, in the possible hierarchy of VIP, she's, like, second only to Fleming. Hmm. Who we still have not seen any of other than his giant disembodied hand coming out of nowhere to, like, fuck shit up. Yeah. He's, he's basically done nothing this entire game. Except set Paula up for horrible deaths and repeating them. Ah, uh, fair point. Yeah, like, I mean, like, Fleming's more the type of villain where, like, his evilness is supposed to be, like... Is, is like shown through like his impact on the world you're going through as opposed to him being physically there to fuck you up oh, all pervasive I can hear Jim's yeah right, hard choices hmm Y'all take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're still a good boy, Christopher. <laughs> Christopher did nothing wrong. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, there is like another category of favorite dot 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 in this game. Favorite character is 100% Christopher. No, favorite side character, I guess, because actual favorite character is Johnson. Yeah. Not kind of. Okay, that was actually side. cool. I I hit that that zombie like with the, uh, like, like with the uh, with the alt fire rolled into him as he was jump kicking and it caused him to explode. <laughs> I was See, wondering but, but, what happened there. Yeah. See, there's still cool shit that happens in this sometimes. Feels like you kind of have to make your own fun more than anything, though. I suppose, yeah. I suppose. Oh, man. I mean, it's... When you get down to it, it's not a bad game. It's just aggressively mediocre. Yeah. And that's probably the, the 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 bigger problem because at least a bad game you can go, dude, wait till you see this, but it is terrible. Whereas oh, you know, yeah. I mean, with this we're struggling to come up with anything to talk about. It's just, yeah, well, you know, there's there's some naked guys that look like beef jerky, and you know, it's it's got some very mid two thousands attitudes towards women. Kind of gross, I guess. So yeah. A lot of sex jokes. Really bad. Which are not in it. Which are, yeah. Which like, normally would not be bad, like in, in in their own right. But that obviously depends on how well they're done. Which this game's proven that it normally does not do well. No. Sadly not. Yeah. And the kind of frustrating part, especially, is that when you look at some of the individual mechanics, it's almost kind of a surprise that. So, so like, RE6 is bad. We all know this. Oh, yeah. Don't don't fucking deny it, you fucking apologists out there. I know who you are. <laughs> you like a I game that has, like, a one good mechanic, and that's the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that's in one section of the fucking game. Yeah, and it's, and it's like, I almost imagine what it could have been if, like, if RE6 was not going the direction it did and just instead decided to further iterate on what they had with RE4 and 5. Like, some of the things in Shadows of the Dam's combat specifically would actually make for, like, an interesting addition to it. Like, the, uh... Like, the fact that you're able to quick turn while aiming. Mm. Which is something you couldn't do in 4 or 5. Like, you, like, you'd hold down the button to, like, ready your gun. And even as you're firing, you could, like, hit the button you norm uh, normally would use for quick turn to just turn right on the spot. Hell, I remember the Which fact that you could move useful. while aiming in Resident Evil 5 and people were like, holy shit, this is a revelation. It's like, no, that's Wait. another couple of games down the way, but that's beside the point. Yeah. I mean, like, the big thing of that, like, I, assuming I'm remembering right, is that RE5, like, added dedicated strafe controls. Which was, like, a, I'm pretty sure that, that was the case, because that would have been, like, super helpful considering it was classic tank controls otherwise with forward mm. back and turning don't remember off the top of my head but Hold it's been on. a while since i've played it but like of the newer games five's genuinely the one of my favorites oh, like i've put as much you, time into that over the years as i have with resident yeah. evil 4. You came from yeah but then again so people will tell me i'm wrong for that because resident evil 5 is everything wrong with the series blah 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 in which case i say shut up fanboy yeah, clearly, clearly you keep forgetting that 6 happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, 6 built off 5, but 6 was a shitty all on its own. It was its own special kind of terrible. Yeah. And even then, my biggest, like, oh, uh, like, disappointment with, with 5 is something that I only really realized, like, after the fact was going back through, like, all the old trailers and realizing that it had, like, God Hand-style dodging. Mm. Like, Chris fucking juking machete swings from, uh, from, like, hordes of, like, Plaga's infected Africans. I've got you. I think just the fact that when you get down to it, 6 wasn't fun. It was dull. Yeah. Oh yeah, we totally talked over this shit. Yeah, that was a thing that was happening. Sorry. <laughs> like, like I said, this 
this is the this is my LP like the closest thing I've done of an LP that's like equivalent to a shit post. Because <laughs> it's kind of what this game kind of ultimately deserves. We're we're giving it precisely as much respect as it deserves. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Also, I'm not sure if that was kind of a badass line or just bad. Yes. Fair enough. It was ass bad. <laughs> so, more air of unavoidable damage. Yay. Yeah, this is kind of bullshit, really. But hey, that that's the end of it. Unfortunately... No. Yes. No, 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 no. This is the last one, though, I promise. <sighs> Gosh, heckin' darn it. Yeah, welcome to your boss fight. Yeah. And this is also, like, another section where I think where, like, I do end up, like, dying midway through just because of some dumb shit regarding, like... It j just stuff re uh, regarding, like, where enemies, like, pop up and the environment trying to funnel you in directions to go that, like... It leads you to believe that there is, like, that these sections are designed so that you are meant to take damage regardless. Like that. Yeah. So you could have just said you died because you fell asleep and I would have believed you. I mean, I was practically... I, like... I was maybe, like, in effect, like, partially comatose while I was recording the, uh, this entire game. Because <laughs> I did, like, knock out all of these videos, like, during an entire weekend in January. Robotosin is a fuck hell of a Fuck January. Drug That's been how long it's been. God, fuck. It's it's been eighty seven years. Oh yeah. Yes it has. At least that's what it feels like at this point. But yeah, this part's especially annoying. And again, it's what do you talk about? It's it's a really bad side scrolling. Like I I know I've I, going back to yet again Yoko Taro, because he keeps showing up. Like, he... people accuse him of having a massive hard-on for side-scrolling shooting sections. Or just shooting sections in general. But at least stuff happens. Yeah. I mean, he said Ikaruga was, like, one of his favorite games ever, which, like, when you look at all those shmup sections in, in Nier Automata, like, not so much in terms of, like, actual game mechanics, but aesthetic, it's like, yeah, I can totally see why. <laughs> Yeah, like, totally get it. Yeah, like, Act 4 in general is the absolute fucking worst part of this game, really. Yeah, I mean, not to say that the, the later bits are all, you know, puppies and sunshine, but... Oh, but they're way fucking better. <laughs> Again, at least shit happens. Also, yeah, you were totally right. Like, the, the Skull Cushioner's projectile in this does arc downward when you I fire. I thought so. So, like I said, I remember when I was uh, playing it, it always reminded me of being more like a cannonball than anything. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, seriously, just look at this shit. Like, how were you ever expected to anticipate where these fuckers are going to pop up and how to avoid them? <laughs> And the power-ups are timer-based, so it's not like you can reserve shots with the skull cushioner until you get to this bit. Like, True if that. you're if yeah. you're not shooting everything or you know moving out the way, and good luck with that because you got a fucking huge hitbox. Yeah. Then you're gonna take damage regardless of what you do. The only saving grace is that when you do get a health pickup, it restores your health to full. Be real dickish if it only gave you back, like, partial. Yeah, like one hit. Or half. Yeah, it's like, oh, got some tequila, now I have my pants back. What? That's the exact opposite of what tequila's supposed to do. <laughs> exactly! So At least from what I've heard. You, you can't prove otherwise. Oh, yeah. 
And I don't drink any alcohol at all, but like I'll fucking believe it. <laughs> I'm legally obligated to just say yes and no more. Mm -hmm. Oh look, more goat head statues. Yay. Yep, more darkness. I think the only thing that's lasted longer than this year has been this stage. Damn. Yeah, Shadows of the Damned LP really is like an extra sign of how shit 2020 has been. <laughs> it's, it's 2020 in microcosm. You think it's gonna yep. end and then, oh look! Murder Hornets. You, yeah, you, you, you're scrolling through the stage and you're just seeing all the awful shit that has happened this year. And if you look <laughs> over the canyon, there's everyone refusing to fucking stay home because of coronavirus. And then you get to the end, you think, finally, we're free of this nightmare. And out came the rape spiders. <laughs> yeah. And then if you look over there in, in that hut, you see a very, like, awful, awful forums owner getting exposed for being a serial abuser. <laughs> yikes a <-roo> indeed. <laughs> yeah, this is really going to fucking date this, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> oh, no, I'm fairly certain every <laughs> LP going on right now has to, is, like, contractually obligated to point out just how bad. Did you go fuck low tax? <laughs> fuck low tax right in his stupid face. Yeah. Note, not an admission fuck. of guilt. Yeah, right. Okay, sure. Yeah. Buddy. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> Enjoy that reduced Patreon money, asshole. <laughs> it was kind of funny watching his uh, Patreon go into free fall, though. I will say Oh, that. yes it was. Even if it did leave us all fucking scared whether or not the forums would get shut down soon after. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was ah, hell, but looking at where it's going, it might as well be shut down. Uh, take it out to the woodshed. Let, yeah. let, let it look at the rabbits. And then pull the trigger. Distract it with a picture of Goatsy before you <laughs> just, like, barrel right to its head. <laughs> One last hurrah, right, my boy? <laughs> Gaping can, anus. Can can I go look at the juice, George? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then you wake up three days later with a baby grand piano in your apartment and no idea how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Oh yeah, there's okay. a boss fight I, I, I going think we, on in all this. I think now we've hit our, yeah, I think now we've hit our limits on ragging about current events and the state of something awful. But anyway, here's a shit boss fight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you get shaken about by a giant woman, so you know. Which make, I mean, I I would not complain about <laughs> normally, except make. Uh, I, I was gonna say make your Steven Universe jokes now while you can. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, only her head is the hitbox. And when you've got the skull cushioner, not entirely helpful. Yeah. And when she starts shaking you about like you're an ugly baby, that's even worse. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I re I refuse to think that Garcia was anything but an ugly baby when he came out. He was born chiseled and full of tats. <laughs> His mother abandoned him because he was just born wearing a leather jacket, and that shit hurts. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> leather jacket and full chest hair, and it's like, how did she wind up with friction burn? Oh, right, okay. Yeah. And she's like at her support group, and that's why my uterus is no longer functional. <laughs> Got ripped to shreds by my leather Mexican baby. <laughs> Why do I feel the... <laughs> Why do I feel that should have been like an eight, uh, like a 1970s art movie? You know, like Andy Warhol's Ripped to Shreds by My Leather Mexican Baby. 
I don't know, but I already know now what my fucking video title for this is going to be. <laughs> Although, interesting fact, seeing as how we've already killed the Sisters Grimm, she's like the one bad guy that gets to live. And she's naked. I guess, yeah. So, that's cool, I guess. I suppose, yeah. And hey, here's our final like shotgun upgrade the skull blaster we'll see that once we get to act five but for now let's let's get away from this awful awful fucking shit show that was act four. <laughs> oh my fucking god oh so glad it's done and relax yep time time for kuriami dance the action the part of this lp that is not quite a shit post <laughs> probably the part that most people actually tune in to watch <laughs> i've i've I would hope so. It would not I, I, surprise I, I, me if that were the case. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look at YouTube analytics to find out, but I would not be surprised if people just stop once it fades to black. Yeah, that too. Assholes. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, on, back to the manga. On to chapter 10. Dead End. All right. So, uh... Chapter starts right away with showing us what Akari Tsukiyono has been up to ever since dropping us off at the Union Hotel. Uh, she's been getting into more fights uh, with the old lady's henchmen from before. Yeah, and seems like she has some kind of past with uh, the girl as well, Luna. Which, I don't rem It's been a while since we've read this. Um, but I don't remember that being really addressed before. Was it? It wasn't. No. Yeah. But I think like the bigger thing that it's supposed to talk about is that like the is that Luna is like from the Kuragani castle. Mm. Like she's actually part of like the the family and that she's technically like being kidnapped or at least like taken away from the uh, from the castle because like as the old man with the machine gun and 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 sword kind of goes on about like there. There's, there's bad shit going on that they can't... A, they can't let Luna be brought back, and B, they can't let Kaido get to the castle either. Yeah, the fact that he calls her the, the Kuragana Kingdom's trash um, has yeah, some implications concerning. for later on. Yeah. Also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest that, it, that in any situation, it is probably not up to the aristocrats to stop any sort of tyranny. <laughs> Um, aristocracy by design slash sheer existence is tyranny to begin with anyway, so... Oh yeah, it, yeah, it, it's just fucking classes and just further like establishing haves and have-nots. Yeah, so, um, good job, buddy! Yeah, good job, you, uh, you deserve a shotgun to the face. Oh, there's a cute little mm -hmm. pic with uh, Akari and uh, Wataru having a nice meal. And yep. head back to the violence. Yep, dude, dude's head gets chopped off. <laughs> and used as a bowl, mm -hmm. impromptu bowling ball. Yep. And the old lady seemed to have only been following orders from someone else to not let Kaido get to the castle. Mm -hmm. But... Unfortunately, she is not spared from Akari's wrath. <laughs> wheels within wheels. Yep. And shotgun Meanwhile. runs within brains. Yeah. Meanwhile, back at the hotel. <laughs> after after a good a few nights of just letting loose and having fun, because goddammit he's needed a vacation this long, Kaido gets a call while still in bed, not unlike a certain pseudo protagonist in another pseudo game. Like, ah. this is more or less how every day in Flower, Sun, and Rain starts. <laughs> I was gonna say, ah, you're talking about contact. <laughs> no, but good one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was more Grasshopper Manufacturer. Never mind. Yeah, fair enough, but. Yeah, uh. Thankfully, it's not a call from that fucker Edagawa. Instead, Dang. it's the Luchador Doctor, Dr. Moonlight. Because any day that you're woken up from a nap by a surgeon Luchador wrestler is a good day. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and 
Uh, Kaido's not really able to come up with a good reason to avoid having to meet with him. <laughs> not for and... lack of trying, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, he heads, heads down a few floors in the hotel, which, based on some of these panels, makes it look like the whole place is more like a mall. Yeah, kind of a weird psychedelic mall. Although, this is probably the most people we've seen in any area since, um... The, uh, uh, forgetting the name where everyone was killing themselves. The Tanaka. Ah, yes, the Tanaka ward. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the hotel up until now seems oddly deserted, and now everyone's here. Oh, yeah. And the reason why everyone's here is because there is a, uh, there's like a game show of sorts being recorded here. Yeah, it's a, a called Dead End. It's a popular international program, but I think, as you'll find, uh, our good buddy Almeida would describe this as driving yourself to death. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and because, like, it's a worldwide sensation, literally everyone from around the world, you know, as if they didn't already have any enough reasons to flog to the kingdom, they're coming to this hotel specifically just to watch it. So yeah, we finally meet up with the doctor, who's wearing a pretty nice suit while while still while still donning the mask. Very stylish, I have to say. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and with him is an old uh, is an old man that is, I guess like a special client, but that specifically wants to talk with Kaido. Also interesting that um, he brings up um, how Yayoi's, you know possible it's possible for her to die and keep coming back to life and then we instantly get sidetracked before yeah, we get like... any answers whatsoever it's like hmm yes interesting you should say that by the way let me tell you my life story i was born in a barn in 1832 mm -hmm. i was the main event <laughs> i headbutted a grenade launcher round <laughs> because that other guy is a pussy Hell yes. <laughs> so, yeah, what the doctor's basically describing is that he has a certain reputation, which is what led him to the kingdom, that he is the unbeatable doctor, because any patient he has, he can basically cure them of any disease or affliction, including death. Which, I, I guess that, I mean, that if you're able to, like, cure even that, I, I suppose that is pretty impressive. That's, like, the worthwhile reputation. Yeah, I'm gonna say any doctor that can do that and can back that up, fucking, if he wants to wear a luchador mask, I am not getting in his way. Yep, s s same here. Just not, none but respect. <laughs> Thinking any doctor that shows up wearing a luchador mask, I'm gonna let him do what he wants, just on pure point of principle, because that's kind of scary. Exactly. And then we uh, get a proper introduction of the old man that's at the table with them. His name is Tainai, who refers to him, uh, who says that he could be called a citizen of heaven, which probably like implies a lot about kind of what he's been through and why he knows Dr. Moonlight. Yeah. Also the fact that um, like a lot of the areas around here have been described as being close to heaven or in, like, those kind of terms. So, you know, also the implication yeah. is that he is from this area in general. Yeah. And so the, I guess, like, the primary reason for why Dr. Moonlight wanted Kaido to come and, like, meet this patient of his is because they share a common, uh, I guess, like, interest in going at ludicrously dangerous speeds. And, like, asks him about, you know, what was it like when you went to 300? And after Kaido describes what that world was, he's like, Nah, fuck you, it's wrong. <laughs> you didn't redshift at all, you liar. Yep. Yeah, his seems to be more... Kaido talks more about the, f the, the, the freedom, the feeling of freedom that you get from going that speed. And he's like, nah, dude, it's all about when you make contact with something big and heavy. 
which... Yeah, it's all about the crash. You know, each to their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this gets very... This very quickly gets into the talks of, like, like the line between life and death and, like, other suitable, like, metaphors of mortality and such. So I'm sure which... this is going to be one of the more upbeat chapters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. About, about as upbeat as the Tanakas. Oh, yeah. Strap yourself in, kids, because no one in this chapter yeah. will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, just the conversation all continues, just further highlighting how differently Kaido and Tainai, like, see what is essentially, like, the same end result. And, and as it turns, and, uh, yeah, Taina is about to, to do something pretty crazy that ties in with, uh, with our little game show that, that's coming up. Because it's clear at this point that with Taina's age and experience in this particular area, he knows full well that Kaido is full of shit with what he is speaking about him, like, going to 300, what he saw, and, like, what he felt about it. Yeah. And again, this whole section just really hammers home their uh, differing philosophies, in a way, of, um, you know, Kaido's uh, all about freedom, but this guy's all about finality. You know, the final, ultimate truth. Yeah. It's... It's the sort of thing that I always, uh, that always, like, made me really love the, like, the, like, the boss lineup in No More Heroes 1, for instance. Like, I feel that's, like, the, in my mind, the quintessential example of this type of thing you're seeing, where it's, like, the bosses exist to provide contrast to the character, uh, to your character's, like, 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 ideology, mm. in a way. And, and in order to, like, poke holes and just expose, dude, like, the fuck are you going on about? Yeah, You, you don't get it. You, you've got an idea, but an idea is not great to base an entire philosophy around. Exactly. You know, just, like, which, which, think a little fair, bit more. Could also, <laughs> which, to be fair, could also be used against Tainai as well, because, like, his idea that he's uh, clearly focused on is also probably not that healthy. Um, it, it definitely has a lot more finality to it. I'll give him that much. That's true, yeah. Like, he, he for his faults, of which there aren't many, um, follows <laughs> his... Well, aren't many because we're not showing them. Follows it to its logical end. Yeah. So, yeah, we got to later in the day... Uh, the festivities for Dead End are getting underway. Kaido is going to be watching al uh, along with Dr. Moonlight. Who's changed into an Andre the... Di uh, fetching Andre the Giant outfit. Of course. I mean, like, as long as he still has the mask, he can rock any outfit he wants. <laughs> you mean, can put him in a naked apron and it'd be like, hell, hell yes. You could put him in a naked apron and I would be like, that is a Dr. Luchador in a naked apron. I need some therapy. I have seen too much. I <laughs> have gone where few men have dared to tread. I need to go return some videotapes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as has been alluded to, Mr. Ty and I is the star of this episode of Dead End. <laughs> And going back to what I mentioned with the Andre Almeida line of driving yourself to death, this is very much what he's going to do. Yep, exactly he what I thought. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And apparently the thing about this one now, I guess, is that whereas Dr. Moonlight has basically prided himself on, like, being able to just, like, revive people that kill themselves whenever... Like, as long as, like, they're, like, at the Union Hotel and, like, it's totally fine. He's making it very clear that it's, like, not... Nah, is gonna do this and then he's gonna be done for good. Like, he's gonna die, die. <laughs> yeah, this is his uh, grand finale, so to speak. Yeah, which is, I think, 
ultimately important for Kaido after what he had to go through with his with his ex, and just being like, nah, you need to actually let you see this for real this time. And also, it's it contrasts with the Tanakas because they're people who are throwing their lives away for basically no reason, whereas you know what he's doing is clearly idiotic, but he has a reason mm -hmm. which. Not great, but you can argue the, the the case that it puts him intellectually in some way above everybody else. Um, still completely idiotic, but at the end of the day, you know, he's been brought back to life like half a dozen times already. So I imagine he's mm -hmm. like, no, 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 let's just see where this goes. Pretty much. Yeah, and... And of course, like, it all lines up well with the fact that Kaido's an Undertaker because this old double as giving him another funeral to perform on his way to the actual funeral he's supposed to be doing. He's performing all these freebies, you know? It's bad for business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this is where Tainai makes a statement that, I guess, is his explanation for what a certain phrase Kaido's always said actually means. Like, in a hurry to live, to him, means breaking down death's door. And this guy is hammering on it at this point. Yeah, and like, Kaido's just trying to do everything to just tell him, like, no, don't do this, don't die, but it's like, you get, so, so what? Tr convince me, or can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, dude, I've lived plenty, I've been brought back from the dead half a dozen times. Just, you know, let it slide. Yep. To live is to die. And... Cut to crash into the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you, you can practically hear the, the squealing tires and then... <laughs> yep. Yeah, all, all sound effects in this are just a Terry Gilliam giant foot stomping down on shit. <laughs> and then it yeah. turns out someone's replaced him with a Snatcher. Which is a mm -hmm. plot twist I did not see coming. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he crashes, everyone cheers, which is extra fucked up, but again, considering all the shit we've seen and how people just, like, frivolously, like, treat death as a, as a concept in this world, like, it's not surprising. Mm. Like, we've, we've seen a bunch of suiciding c uh, citizens with all the same name. We've seen our ex-girlfriend take pleasure in dying and getting uh, uh, resuscitated, and now we've seen a whole game show devoted to celebrating it. Yeah, it's... Just this this game show just constantly makes me think of Jackass for some reason. Um, except like no one people were running into walls, not driving into them. Or at least I haven't seen yeah. the, the last movie, so maybe that changed. But imagine not after it's Ryan like, Dunn. It's, it's like there's an alternate universe where Bam Margera and CKY just like took a very very dark turn, and this was the result. <laughs> yeah, CKY just became a suicide cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, that's what the, uh, that's what it stands for. Camp, kill yourself. Very true. Very or Christian Klein Youth, as uh, they called themselves when they were playing uh, more family friendly venues. <laughs> I'm not making that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Absolutely uh. true. <laughs> oh, you learn something new every day. Whether you want to or not. Yep. And and despite all of what Ty and I tried to show Kaido, he just he just re keeps repeating his mantra. He's he doesn't want to die. He's just in a hurry to live. Yep. And then yeah. Game over. And like yeah. Like, you could at least tell, or at least you hope you tell, that, like, despite what he's still saying, like, kind of repeating the same shit he always does, that deep down he is, like, impacted by all of this. It's... And something has to be changing. 
Yeah, it's hard to tell because on the one hand, yes, he is watching characters like literally throw away their lives for no reason. But he's also so stoic, it's hard yeah. to tell what has any kind of re uh, impact on him. Because he doesn't react to begin with. So... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like he's he's literally smiled maybe five times in the entire series to date. Yeah, it's like just incredibly rare for any sort of positive emotion to be visibly displayed on his face. Yeah, and the few times he has reacted, it's been you know as with this to tell someone no, don't do that. That's really dumb. Oh yeah. So you know, yes, it is having some impact on him, but at the end of the day, it's kind of difficult to tell what, if any. But, he's, he is, he is winner. Yeah, yeah, Tainai did win, even if it means, you know, he's, he's officially dead now. And Kairo's got a funeral to, to set up. Yep. Also, they um, they started calling him Wataru of the Divine Wind, which probably means something, but eh, who knows for sure. Yeah, who knows? I mean, like everyone calls him Kamikaze already, just because he's because of like him being that kind of legend. Oh, but... that's right. Yeah, div Kamikaze literally means Divine Wind. Durr. Never mind me. I'm dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine yeah, whoever translated this meanies. chapter just did it a bit more literally. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, that's it. That's it for for dead end. Uh, yeah, we're already three for. Uh, we've already seen three instances of this kingdom having incredibly fucked up perspectives on death, and from from this point on. Uh, Kaido's challenges are going to be a whole lot more personal. Well, I'm, I'm sure things are going to start looking up for him any day now. Yep, absolutely. He's 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 going to get, finally get to that castle tomorrow, and he'll he'll do his job, get paid, and everything will be grand. And then he'll, he'll be, go to the America. Finally, go and maybe watch some Velvet Underground performances. Who knows? Yeah, it'll be great.